story. When President Obama visited Africa earlier this month, he went to Ghana, an example of relative success on a continent held back by repeated cycles of government failure. Mr. Obama said it was time African leaders stopped blaming the outside world. Development depends on good governance. That is, that is the ingredient which has been missing in far too many places for far too long. That's the change that can unlock Africa's potential. And that is a responsibility that can only be met by Africans. President Obama's father was Kenyan, and Kenya had high hopes it would be honored with the prestigious visit. But the government there is riddled with corruption, and the poor only sink further into misery. Forty years ago, Kenya had an income per capita higher than South Korea. Now it trails behind. Nigeria has been blessed with a large population and vast oil wealth, yet the Niger Delta, where the oil is mined, has become a quagmire of corruption and conflict, with oil smuggling now out of control. The truncated limbs from Sierra Leone's civil war are just the most visible scars of a conflict fueled by competition over the country's valuable diamond deposits. And these are coal town miners in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The mineral they're paid a dollar a day to extract is sold on for huge profits to companies that make mobile phones. But according to a new report, the trade is financing conflict. Global Witness says that across the east of the DRC, both the Congolese army and rebel groups compete over rich seams of cassiterite or tin ore, gold and other minerals, leaving civilians devastated in their wake. The minerals are sold on to Western companies through intermediaries. These companies are not doing enough to analyze their supply chains and to really interrogate where these minerals are coming from. So we're not actually saying they're doing anything illegal. That's, that's an important point to make. But they're not doing the necessary due diligence to ensure that they're not buying minerals that have effectively come from warring parties. One of the companies featured in the report is Tai Sarko, the world's fifth largest tin producing company, owned by British metals giant AMC. They robustly dismiss the claims and say they've recently enhanced their due diligence program to make their supply chain more transparent. Africa's so called resource curse is man made, which makes it at least curable. But the continent also has to cope with the challenges of nature and disease. Whatever the causes of all the poverty, the net result, 22 million children in Africa go hungry every day. Emily Buchanan, BBC News. Well, a little earlier, I spoke to John Kufour, who stepped down as president of Ghana this year. He's now a global ambassador against hunger for the UN's World Food Programme. I put it to him that oil and natural resources had so far proved more of a curse than a blessing for Africa. I wouldn't say the, these fines have been altogether a case. There's a good aspect in the sense that I want to come use Ghana as an example. Mm -hmm. um, we want to develop at quite a fast uh, rate, but without the discovery of oil, we found that we, uh, especially for capital expenditure, we tended to go almost uh, cap in hand to donors and uh, partners of goodwill with our fight and um, of course assuming good governance would be the order of the day I'm sure I uh, would be resourced enough from our own uh, sources. But, but you've, hit the you've hit the nail on the head there haven't you really? I mean I should say of course if you take Ghana as an example yes. about three billion barrels of oil possibly in reserves by yes. 2010 mm -hmm. your country could be producing something like 250,000 yes, yes. barrels a day yes. and people are saying though look we're worried that the corruption that we've seen in Nigeria with all its oil wealth is going to be replicated in Ghana I won't discuss other countries but uh, in the sense of Ghana I would say uh, it, it, I'm sure the people are determined to ensure there's good governance, accountability, and uh, quite a, a good measure of transparency. You were president for two terms. Have you left a good, solid basis 
that you can make sure that there's not going to be corruption, particularly fueled by the discovery of oil? I, I, I believe I'm, I left a good base. I believe the people of Ghana are resolved to ensure uh, the benefits from the oil find would stay largely in the country. Barack Obama visited Ghana about 10 days or so ago because of its democratic credentials, he said. But a lot of people also said, look, it's because of the oil. The United States depends for about 25% of its oil needs from Africa. And this is the way that the Americans are kind of staking their claim on this newfound oil reserves in Ghana. I, I, I think that's cynical. Um, o o Obama visited Ghana, and he said so himself, uh, because... Uh, of the governance and uh, the um, improving democratic rule um, of the country. Obama could have gone to countries that uh, have more proven oil resources in Africa. But he didn't go. Uh, you must be worried. Okay, you're saying that one shouldn't be cynical, but uh, you must be a bit concerned that there could be a bit of a destabilizing rivalry for the resources of Africa between the United States and, say, the Chinese, who we know are engaged in lots of infrastructural projects in Africa in return for access to raw materials? I do not know that. Um, there are Chinese companies in Ghana now, but invariably the government has gone for them. They do not come imposing themselves on us, um, nor um, has their coming sort of blocked out access uh, to other peoples like the United States or Great Britain, uh, Japan. They are out there in Ghana. And uh, uh, of course, I, I should admit that uh, um, governments should negotiate well with uh, whoever comes, whether it's Chinese, Indian, or whoever. Okay, you've just been appointed a new global hunger ambassador for the United Nations World Food yes. Program. I mean, Africa is really such a wealthy continent. It should be able to feed its people. And yet it's its governments that have let the people down, wouldn't you say? Uh, it's rather simplistic to put all the blame on the governments. What um, has happened is that we haven't been too efficient in the management of our resources. But I tell you, Africa is changing very fast. And this I can say for all of Africa. And uh, with that, I expect perhaps within a generation, Africa will come into its own. So uh, the over-dependence on outside sources for, say, food, basics like food, would uh, be reduced. But in the meantime, I support aid and trade. Some people say it should be trade, not aid. Where we are in terms of development now, I would say we still need some aid. And the important thing is to use the aid that comes efficiently for the benefit of the people. So when I, they invited me to go, I, I was very happy because I still believe I have got some use to me, <laughs> even after the presidency of Ghana. And uh, this is the way I want to use my the insights and experiences that I have gained as a, a former president. John Cavour, who stepped down as president of Ghana in January this year. Now,